Okay, so we're gonna be covering all the steps of painting your kitchen. Holidays are right around the corner. A lot of us want to have our kitchen spruced up and updated before family comes to visit. This is the perfect time to be doing it. Tonight, I'm gonna be showing you prepping and I have stations set up. So you're gonna see all the, the, all the steps of the process. It's, it is really easier than you think. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how I prep. I'm gonna be showing you applying silk. I'm gonna be showing you chalk mineral paint. We're gonna do a little bit of everything and I'm gonna mix a custom color for the island. You can already see I have samples going on over there. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to apply your slick stick. So this is gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully if you do your kitchen, make sure you share pictures with Dixie Belle. They'd love to see it. Now, we're gonna start off with, now this is typical cabinets. They're shiny and you can use slick stick if you want that extra assurance that you know you're gonna have that gripping it's the wear and tear uh, slick stick is a very strong product but if you don't have slick stick or you don't want to invest in getting slick stick i'm going to show you an option first thing you're going to need to do and i already did it just because i wanted it dry before the live you're going to want to clean your cabinets with dixie bell's white lightning it's a tsp based cleaner so i did clean really well and i always use a scrubby pad to clean my cabinet so I can get all that. We have a lot of grease and grime on our cabinets. So you clean with white lightning first, scrub it really good, get all that grease and grime off of there, but then you want to give it a good rinse. You want to remove any residue left behind. Now, the, just to let you know, the white lightning is meant for pre-paint prep. Uh, so don't use this for spring cleaning. Don't use this for, you just want to clean up your cabinets before the holidays. This will slightly degloss your cabinets. So this is for pre-paint uh, pre prep. So spray down your cabinets, wash them really well, give them a good rinse, and then wipe it down. Then from there is when you decide if you're going to use slick stick or if you're not going to use slick stick. Now, I'm, I'm using slick stick because I have a dog that is partially blind and par partially deaf. And she uh, sometimes will jump up and um, with her toenails on my cabinets. And she's a little dog. So I use slick stick because I want that extra assurance. But if you don't want to use slick stick, you do have the option of just scuff sanding. Scuff sanding, you're not sanding. You know, you don't have to take out your, uh, your, you know, your surf prep or anything like that. You can just use, I have a couple options here. You can use your rad pads from surf prep, which Dixie Bell carries those. You can use the white or the blue. I actually use the blue, you can tell, on the cabinets. Or you can use Dixie Bell's uh, sanding sponge. But what you're gonna be doing is basically, you're just gonna be wiping over your cabinets just to kind of degloss it a little bit. You're not taking the entire finish off. You're just gonna wipe it down. It's gonna be a little loud. That's all you have to do. You'll have a slight dust over it. Then you're still gonna want to take a paper towel and a little bit of water. Now I scuff sanded this a little bit earlier too, but I wanted to show you, it, you don't have to put a lot of effort into scuff sanding. You're just knocking the gloss off, giving it a little bit of tooth so, for your paint to adhere to. Then you're gonna wipe it, get all that dust. You can use a tack cloth. I can't touch a tack cloth, but you're gonna see the dust on your cloth. You wanna remove all the dust with a damp rag, and then you're ready to go. So if you don't wanna use slick stick, just make sure you give it a good, good scuff sand to give it some tooth for your paint to grab onto. You're deglossing it. You're not sanding off the finish. Next, I'm gonna show you a couple options. If you wanna roll your slick stick, yes, you can roll your slick stick, but a roller is not gonna get into all these little um, fine areas. So you're gonna to wanna to go first with a brush. Now you're gonna notice that my slick stick is a little gray. I actually, when I get my slick stick, I actually pour a, like a half a, a half a teaspoon, very little. I actually pour it into my container, stir it up, and so I always have gray slick stick. I prefer gray better. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna do my cutting in first. You're gonna cut in all your edges wherever the roller won't go. And you don't have to use a roller. I didn't use a roller on the rest of it, but I'm showing you if you want to use a roller, you can, so I'm showing you both options. So you're gonna wanna cut in where the roller will not go. You do that first, because then we'll come back with the roller so that it all has the same texture, okay? So I'm just cutting in. Okay, that's all I need to do. I can go along the edges if I want to, um, especially like along this bottom. I'm gonna do this real quick. This is usually where my trash can is at, so this is kind of the, the hard part of my cabinets. It gets the most uh, used and abused. So I'm just gonna cut in. I'm gonna go right along my trim there. 
I'm using my angled mini because it helps me go right along that edge. And the cutting end is just going to help where the roller's not able to go, okay? And I'm gonna show you the roller. I'm gonna show you a couple options for the rollers. Let me just get this cutting in real quick. Okay, get up to this edge. Okay, there we go. So I cut in the areas that the roller will not go. Now I'm gonna be using a roller to apply my slick stick. So I have my slick stick on my little plate. I'm gonna prime it up, my roller up a little bit and you can roll it on. So I'm gonna be going over all this area so the texture is all the same. Now you're gonna see, see the high-low, high-lows? I always come back and go at a 45 degree angle and I do that with my top coats too. That gets rid of those high-lows and then I go back and clean it up, whichever direction I want my roller to go. Since I have this cutting in area, I'm going right to left, not up and down, because I have all these cut in areas. See, and if you have any, this is just the slick stick part of it. There we go. So you can roll on your slick stick. I'll roll on a little bit more of this. Keep. But see, that is what you're gonna get. But if you don't worry about that, you go back at a 45 degree angle and that gets rid of it. Gently go over it to get rid of all those 45 degree angle marks. It smooths it right out. That is the same thing I do with clear coats. The 45 degree angle makes it a lot easier and you don't have all those little high low marks. It doesn't matter how flat. This is like a, you know, I don't know, the panel boards, it's not real wood. You're, you're in it, so you think it's flat, but you're still gonna get these little high lows. 45 degree angle. And then go back and gently, back and forth like this. That gets rid of and evens out any of those 45 degree angle marks. Nice and smooth. So that is how you roll on your slick stick. So you're gonna let your slick stick dry for 24 hours so that it has a chance to adhere and grip onto the surface. If you, don't give it time to dry. It hasn't had a chance to do its job. You want it to completely dry. So don't think that just because it's dry to the touch that you can go ahead and start painting. Um, I mean, you can, but you do take some risks. I prefer to let it dry and Dixie Belle also prefers it to dry for 24 hours. That is gonna keep it from reactivating when I put my paint on it and I'm using a sprayer bottle or my misting bottle. So um, let it dry for 24 hours or at least overnight. If, if you, I mean, if you can't wait 24 hours, let it dry overnight so it has a chance to do its job. And that job is an important job, it's gripping. And it's not gonna grip immediately if you don't let it dry. Okay, get this on, and then 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle, and then smooth it out. You don't wanna be heavy handed. There you go. See how quick and easy this is? And I'm just using, since I did, I already did a scuff sand on this, uh, because for demonstration purposes, I did that scuff sand. I'm only gonna use one coat of slick stick. Actually, I don't have to do a 45 degree angle on that because it went on nice and smooth. Okay, get down to my cutting edge. There you go. So I have the same texture. There we go. So you can, you can definitely, definitely use a roller for your slick stick. I'm going to roll my, my roller up in a plastic bag so that I can keep working later. And we're going to move on to the next step. So I've got you set up in stations. Hold on. Let me move you over to the next station. Um, you can see that I experimented with colors. Do this first because just because in the jar, um, like here, this is a custom mix. I'm going to show you that in just a second. This is Stormy Seas, but just holding the jar up, you really can't tell what colors you're going to want to go with. So I did do some sampling first. This is Stormy Seas and Oyster, but I'm going with Baja Gray and a custom mix. Okay, but I'm going to go a little bit lighter than this. So let's go ahead and do our custom mix and then we'll start painting the cabinets. Okay, so I'm going to do a custom mix. I'm going to use Stormy Seas. Stormy Seas, and but I don't, it, I want to go a little bit darker than the Stormy Seas. So you can see inside this jar, here's the color, and I'm just going to dump a little bit of caviar in here. See that color? Isn't that gorgeous? But I wanted a shade darker. My room next door is full of, go, take a guess, 
collard greens. You know that's my favorite color. I have several pieces of furniture in collard greens in the next room. So I want to go a little bit darker than the stormy seas. So I have got um, three-fourths of a jar here. It's up to about here. I'll be able to do this whole island with this, two coats. So I got it up to about there in stormy seas. And I'm going to take just a little, you know, two, two teaspoons of caviar just to deepen it up a little bit. Caviar is our black. I'm gonna paint over all of this. And I, I prefer using my Dixie Belle angled, especially with the cabinets so I can get these in these little grooves. And I've got my misting bottle. My slick stick has been on actually for two days or a couple days, you all saw pictures of it. So I'm gonna be using a spray bottle and I'm gonna use very little paint. This paint, this whole container is gonna last me two coats. So I'm gonna give it a little mist and I'm gonna start cutting in here in my boxes first. Okay, so I missed it with a little bit of water. The water is gonna help my paint go on smooth and it's also gonna help me use less paint. Okay, and this island, I could get it all done tonight. Granted, I have to go pick up Joy from work, but I could do this whole, uh, whole island in probably an hour. Now, normally, People would, uh, t people would take their uh, cabinet doors off. I want you to be able to see the whole thing. They would take their cabinet doors off. I'm not worried because I'm not painting the inside. So if you take your cabinets off, take the hardware off, make sure you put a piece of tape on the inside. Number the cabinet, but also put a piece of tape on the inside on one of the shelves in there that has that corresponding number on it so that when you're putting the cabinets back, it'll say like top one. And then inside the cabinet, it'll say top one. And what I mean by top means you don't want to have your cabinet door upside down, the bottom at the top. So label your cabinets if you're going to take them off and do them. Okay, so I got the little edge done. I'm going to be able to get a whole cabinet door done. Mist as you need to. Right now I'm just getting the paint on and then I'm going to even it out after I've got it on. That's why I like this little angled brush it's going to get in all of those corners for me. And I use the water to thin it out so it goes nice and smooth. And I'll have less brush strokes. I know I'm looking kind of messy right now, but that's okay. Okay, so normally this is gonna take two coats. Because I've got that slick stick underneath, I'm definitely gonna do two coats. I will be sealing it with uh, clear coat and satin, which is the easiest clear coat to work with. Okay, I've got to get all my brush strokes going in the same direction. Getting all those corners. There we go. See how nice and smooth this is looking? I'm going to get this door done and this drawer done. Oops, I got missed a little bit. This door and this drawer done, and then we're going to move over to silk. And I'm going to show you the silk. The silk is actually, if you're doing a kitchen cabinet, silk is so smooth going on. And um, I just think it has such a beautiful, such a beautiful finish to it. And you don't have to seal it. But once again, I've got two dogs. One that isn't gentle with any of our stuff because she's partially blind and partially deaf. And um, so I am doing the extra steps of clear coating everything. Getting in all those corners. You wanna make sure, especially when you're using water, that um, you get in all those corners. You don't want the paint to, to accumulate in these four corners or any drips. You want a nice smooth finish. So I'm kinda of going over it, giving it a very thin coat. And you can see anytime I see a area that has any accumulated paint that I see, I'm just going over it again, okay? See how easy this is? I'm gonna be doing silk next over on these other cabinets because I'm doing a two-toned kitchen. This island will be one color and then my cabinets will be another. Okay, I do wanna open my drawers. They don't touch so I don't have to worry about um, leaving them open to dry. They don't touch. Like a dresser, we always have to worry about a dresser. Um, a dresser having the, the drawers dry shut I'm not painting the inside of this cabinet, so I'm not worried about it. Get along that edge. 
and I'll get that drawer later. I may as well do this while I'm here. Make sure you get all of your edges. Always come back, long strokes. Okay, see how nice that's gonna be? And seriously, it, it'll save you so much money if you do your own cabinets. Sorry if you are a cabinet painter and you do it for a business. Um, if you paint a piece of furniture, you can easily paint your own kitchen. It is time consuming, the prep, it is a little bit time consuming, but it's, you're paying yourself basically by not paying somebody else. Okay, there we go. Nice smooth, smoothing that out. There we go. Get the bottom and then I'll get that drawer and then we'll move on to silk. Okay, so I got to get this bottom section here. If your paint starts to pull or it's not coming smooth and you got a little bit of brush strokes, once again, just take a little bit of misted water, your misting bottle, not a spray bottle, a misting bottle of water. I will get on the ground and get the underneath of this uh, cabinet, but I don't want to do it on camera because I don't want to have my self propped up on camera. So I will do this underneath. Another thing you're going to want to watch for is when I do my front, when I do my front, ignore my mess in here, when I do my front, if you get any pooled up right along the edge, I always do these edges last so that I don't have any pulled up paint that came over my edge of my front when I was doing the front. But I'm actually, it's this angled brush, I'm not getting it on the inside here. I'm not, you could tape it off if you want to, but I'm kind of going at an angle and it's keeping those bristles from uh, going inside my cabinet. So I don't have any paint on my inside of my cabinet and I can show you when I get done. If you do, just take a baby wipe to it and clean it off. So if you do get it on the inside, let me go ahead and try to get the door open far enough. If you get it on the inside, I don't really have any on the inside, but you just take a baby wipe and you'd run your baby wipe right along this edge if you're not painting the inside and clean that up. Keep your baby wipes handy, okay? So there is one door. Isn't that gonna look nice? I love this color. It will take two coats. I will let this set for at least two to four hours before I put a second coat on. A lot of people will do it sooner, and yes, you can do it sooner. I just prefer to let it dry. I don't wanna take a heat gun to it. This is my kitchen. Um, so I'm, go I'm going to be giving it the proper dry time for every step. Okay, See, nice long strokes back and forth so it's nice and smooth. No choppy, no choppy brush strokes. You can put it on choppy like this, but always come back, and you notice my hole, I'm not painting over my hole yet. I never go over that until I have very little paint on my brush. By doing that, I'm going to keep from having paint pool up in that hardware hole and then drip out later, like a walk away and all of a sudden I come back and I got a drip coming out of the hardware. I don't go there on the hardware hole until I have very little paint on my brush, and then I will do the hole. Okay, now I'll go over it. That is going to help you from uh, having a surprise when you come out in an hour and you can't figure out why that dripped. You didn't see that it was accumulated. You don't want to drip. Okay. Getting down into all these edges, all that detail, and then smoothing it out. Don't forget to smooth it out. Okay. One more corner. And I'm putting very, oh, by the way, I'm putting very little paint on my brush. I think this color is gonna look wonderful with the granite that we have in here. Now let's say you look at it and you're like, oh, I got some brush strokes, but I got the paint on. Don't worry about it. You can go back and do a quick mist of water and then go back with your brush and smooth it out. You don't wanna leave any brush strokes. So now I just mist it with a little bit of water and smooth out any of my brush strokes. But that is how easy it is to do your kitchen cabinets. That quick, these simple steps. So I'm gonna put my lid on my little custom color here. And I, I will seriously have paint left over from doing this island. Now let's switch over to silk. Okay, I'm gonna use my oval medium for this because silk, I like to load up my brush a little bit more than normal. You saw with the chalk mineral paint, I put very little on my brush, but then I use a water, the water to help spread it out. You don't wanna use water with silk. 
Now, I mean, if you absolutely have to because you got drag marks and you're in a very dry area and you have to mist it, minimal misting, okay? It's not, it's not a, this isn't a chalk-based paint. Uh, silk is a mineral paint, a mineral paint with a clear coat um, built in, one, one, consider one coat of clear coat built in, but it also has that one um, coat of uh, stain blocking primer in it, kind of like our boss. It has a stain blocking primer, and it also, so especially if you have cabinets that you're worried about bleeding, you can use this as an uh, added protection because it has one coat of uh, boss in it, uh, which is a stain blocker and one coat of clear coat. So you always want to scuff sand when using silk. So unless you're, unless you got, unless you're using slick stick, I'm using slick stick, but you definitely have to scuff sand before you use silk. Now this is Baja Gray. It doesn't really look gray. It's more of a, a, a grayish. So in some lights it looks beige and some lights it looks gray. Um, but in my room here, it looks more like a beige. With the silk, I am using my oval medium because like I said, I like to load up a little bit more because I'm not using water to help spread it out. I'm dipping in, see, I'm using, oops. I'm using a little bit more. Usually you don't see me use that much on my brush at a time when I'm using um, uh, the chalk mineral based paint. This is a mineral paint, but it's not a chalk paint. Um, so here, oh my gosh. First time you guys use this, I mean, I, I just love using it. It, um, it dries to an eggshell finish, but it's just like, it's hard to describe until you've tried it. It is such a smooth finish. This color is a winner when it comes to kitchen cabinets. Look at that beautiful color. See, look at that, how smooth that goes on. Now silk, like I said, is probably my first choice when it comes to kitchen cabinetry. Um, but they didn't have the color that I needed for my island. That's why I went with the chalk mineral based paint. But you can, I mean, it's, you can have just as great of a finish with the chalk mineral based paint. I just think the silk, it, one, it's fun to paint with because it's such a soft feel. But two, um, it has all those protective qualities. It also is mildew resistant. Um, so I kind of like that idea with the amount of water that is in a kitchen and working around. Um, you bring this down so you can see the whole cabinet. It has, um, it's mildew resistant. It has that clear coat built in. It has a stain blocker built in. It's great for outdoor projects. Um, so that's why it's my preferred go-to when it comes to doing kitchen cabinets. Personally, uh, like I said, I went with the chalk mineral paint for my island just for the, uh, the fact that it was the color I needed. And I wanted to show you guys both. And each time I dip in, I'm just grabbing chunks now. You don't want to overwork this paint too, because I mean, unlike with the chalk paint, we use water if we want to get rid of drag marks. With the silk, we don't want to use water. Okay, so isn't that gonna look pretty? Okay, dip back in, as you can see right there. And now I'm gonna get my inside panel. But you will be surprised if you've never used silk and you've, you're used to using chalk paints, you're gonna be surprised the first time you use it. You're gonna be like, wow, the feel. It is fun to paint with because I'm a brush paint person. I don't spray any of my stuff. Um, I love the feel of a paintbrush. And so for me, then when you use the silk, it's just, it's almost like painting with silk. Okay, so hopefully I'm showing you guys that you don't have to be afraid to do your kitchen cabinets. Uh, I'm not even taking my doors off. So, but you know, if you, if you want to take your doors off, you can, but like I said, I can't take my doors off and do a live at the same time. Got to get this edge right here because then I'd have to move my camera from the garage to the kitchen, to the garage, to the kitchen. So I left my doors in so I could show you guys this. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'll get the underneath last. Now with silk, you also want to always do two coats. You want two coats because you want that added protection of that clear coat um, and you want uh, the stain blocking properties. So it's always recommended, even though you might have full coverage with one coat, they do always want to recommend you use two coats of silk. And nine times out of 10, when I'm painting a piece of furniture, I'm doing two coats no matter what anyway. Okay, I keep on moving you down, up, but there we go. So this will take two coats. My first coat is a little bit thinner than because it's just something for my second coat to grab onto. 
but it definitely you're able to see what these cabinets are going to look like. Making sure I have no pulled up paint in any of those grooves. And okay, then it's starting to dry. You can already see sections that will dry. You may be tempted because it's starting to dry. Silk dries differently. Silk dries from the outside in. Our chalk paints dry the opposite. It dries from the inside out. So you may touch the silk and think it's dry. Give it two to four hours before you put your second coat on because since it dries from the top in, when you touch it, the outside might be dry, but the underneath may not. And so you wanna have great adhesion. So give it your two to four hours before you, um, before you uh, put on your second coat. My next step, in two to four hours, I'll come back and put a second coat on. And then I'm gonna wait until the next day if I wanna do a clear coat. Um, I do plan on clear coating my cabinets with a Dixie Belle clear coat and sa uh, satin. Just for the fact, I just want that added durability. I have two dogs and I have kids and um, vacuum cleaners hitting them and all this kind of stuff. So I do want that added assurance. That's one reason that I did do slick stick first. It's for that extra protection. Okay, now here is the before picture, a quick, quick before picture. And this is what it looks like afterwards. That island is chalk mineral based paint and the rest of the cabinets are all silk paint. I did do two coats of satin clear coat to help protect them. And there we go. Don't forget to like and subscribe.